This is Mamata King with Warframe Breakdown, where we break down Warframe so you can be broken in Warframe. Today we're going to go over everything you need to know about the Necromech. How to get it, what the parts are, and what you can do with a Necromech. So here we go, we got a Necromech. Um, as you can see, it is completely 100% customizable. Once you have it and you claim it from your foundry, you can customize it from your arsenal menu and you can throw mods on it you can throw weapons on it and you can change all of its stats like you could with a normal weapon um, here are some of the mods that I've actually come across since uh, it's launched and we also can switch out its primary weapon now the weapon primary weapon that the necromex have is an arc weapon. So what does that mean? That means you can take this arc weapon here and we can actually throw it on our arc wing. We can throw it in our heavy gun slot and we can completely customize that and throw mods on it as well. So there's, it's got all your traditional mod spots. You can see that there's the standard eight that all arc guns have. Um, if you notice with the Necromech, it had a standardized uh, 12 slots for modding for it. And then you can see that we have something else here that we didn't know about. This is the Arquebex. So let's go ahead and go over these abilities real quick so that we understand where we're getting all this stuff. So the Necromech that you can get currently that's available from the Necrolisks um, inside of the Entrada family is the Necroweb. Or is, is the Void Rig is what we got here. It has its first ability is the Necroweb. And then its second ability is Storm Shroud, and its third ability is Grav Mines, and then its uh, last ability is Guard Mode. Um, so the very first ability is like uh, you pick, you pull out a canister and you can toss it, or you can shoot the canister and it explodes. Um, and then the third, second ability is uh, Storm Shroud, where you are invincible to all damage. When you do take damage, it gets reflected at the enemy at a damage multiplier. Um, so kind of like uh, it, it's kind of like that reflection mod, only except it's like really overpowered because it just multiplies the damage back. And this even works against you. So if you like walk around and you see a necromech with this ability active, dude, they will wreck you if you shoot it. So just don't melee it, don't shoot it when it's got it, just kind of sort of ignore it and run. And then as soon as uh, that thing drops, go ahead and hit it with everything you got. The third ability is Grave Mines, where you spin, a, like your head is starts spinning and it just starts launching a whole bunch of these mines and they just kind of sort of exploding in the area. And then the last mode is guard mode. And this is where you pull out the Arbex, uh, Arquebex. And as you can see, it's kind of sort of got it right there. That's actually the fourth ability and it's a channel ability. So that means it has an energy drain per second. So the longer it's active, you'll see that your energy bar drains. And then when it hits zero, you'll come out of the uh, ability. Um, that Arquebex is completely modifiable, and it doesn't have a standard eight slots. It has nine slots. So you can see amongst the configurations, it comes with uh, two standardized polarities, a Naraman and a uh, and a Matarai polarity. The uh, mouse alone does not co uh, comes with one polarized slot, which is the Matarai, and the Necromech. Uh, or in this case, our Void Rig, the name of the Necromech that we own, uh, comes with two, uh, three polarities. It comes with a Varzin, Matarai, and Naraman. Um, you will have, you can use Forma. You can throw or can Catalyst for the Necromech. You can throw on Lens. Then you can also for the Arc Gun. It's like a standard Arc Gun. You can throw an um, or can catalyst and you can throw a grabby mag. However, the interesting thing about this one is when you do get the necromech weapons, they actually come pre-installed with the orkin catalyst and the gravity mag. You can throw forma on it and you can also throw a lens on it when it gets max ranked. The other thing you can do with the Arquebex is you can throw an orkin catalyst on it and it can be polarized. Uh, well, actually, it comes pre-installed with the Oregon Catalyst, so you don't even really need to throw that on, but you can indeed polarize it if you so desire. Um, so yeah, with that being said, now let's go over how we can get these parts. So, um, like we said in other previous videos, the way you get Necromex is you have to complete Isolation Volt Bounties. Essentially, there is this hidden 
or it can bolt deep and down underneath the crest. If you go in, unlock it, you get a whole bunch of loot out of it. Uh, the drop table does not drop the Necromech stuff. The thing that actually drops the Necromech stuff is finding other Necromechs and then destroying them. There are Necromechs out inside of the Cambian Drift that you can actually use Transference on and go into, but they removed the bug where you actually could get parts to drop from them. That no longer is a thing. Parts do not drop. If you own a Necromech and you bring a Necromech into a mission and that Necromech dies, it also too does not drop a part. So there's no way of getting around uh, trying to not do this Isolation Bolt to actually get the Necromech. You have to go do the Isolation Bolt. You have to kill the Necromechs that are down, down there. And then that's how you get your Necromech parts. There are four Necromech parts. Uh, we'll show you where you can pick up the blueprints and stuff and how to craft them. So you'll have to be in your tunnel in order to access it because you have to use transference to get the Necromech. So it only makes sense. Um, so if we go this way, we can see that if we go talk to Necroid, we can see we have some Necromech stuff. So let's see. Um, let's go to the uh, browse wearers here. And there are four parts. There's the casing. Not chassis, not to be confused with chassis, but pretty much the same thing. Casing. Uh, there is the engine. There is the uh, capsule. And then there is the weapon pod. And then you have, of course, the blueprint. So you will have to get a damaged necromech weapon pod, a damaged necromech pod, a damaged necromech engine, and a damaged necromech casing. And those four components will allow you to build the... Void Rig. When you reach rank 2, you can build your very first Necromech uh, with the uh, Necroid here, and you can get an additional arc gun called the Cortege. The Cortege has three parts. It has a Cortege Barrel, Cortege Receiver, and Cortege Stock. These items are what drop from the bounty as a mission reward completion. So it does not require you to do the mission over and over and over. If you wanted to, I'm pretty sure you could probably just leave after you, you kill the Necromech and try to save some time. I'm not entirely sure how much time, time you would actually save, but it's a lot faster ten, as a tendency to go and just do the bounty, and I'll explain why in a second here. So, um, as another mention here, another thing to mention that was important that we forgot to go over with the Necromech. Let's go to here real quick here. Um, the Necromech is customizable. So if we go to the customizable Necromech, we can actually choose a different arc gun. So I'll just go ahead and throw on my Fluke Dust. And as you can see here, oh, geez, that's an awful spot for that. Let me, <laughs> geez. Okay, let's go here. Um, let's go back. That's a, that's a major bug. They should, they should definitely fix that. <laughs> Lots of bugs on this update. If you can see that we actually have our fluke test actually equipped instead. However, we cannot actually switch out that. So this is essentially like an exalted weapon. Uh, it's moddable. It doesn't exactly give affinity, but it can be ranked up. Um, and when you rank it up all the way to max rank, it does not show. In fact, the Necromech and this uh, exalted weapon for the Necromech do not up here inside of your profile. Although I have noticed I've been getting additional affinity towards the Necromech. I'm not entirely sure if that's a bug or what is going on, but I've just been seeing that. But it doesn't appear inside of my profile. So we'll see if that actually becomes something that you get affinity for since you are ranking it up to rank 30, kind of like all your other standardized items, but we'll, we'll just have to see on that. Um, but the arc weapon, you can actually find this arc weapon inside of your profile, um, and you can actually see this does actually guaranteed give you affinity. Um, what's interesting about this is when we change the color of this, it actually changes the color of your gun. So we'll go ahead and change that to white, and then it glitches out and then allows you to customize it. So um, that's very, so that's good. So you can actually customize this. So where you actually customize the gun isn't in the same menu where you customize the um, arc the the. Uh, Necromech, so we'll have to, we'll just throw that back to the way it is. Where you customize this weapon is, is over here. So we can actually customize this. So I'm going to actually change my energy out here because, oh my goodness, awful energy colors. Let's not. And let's do, oh, nope, 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 nope. We want that. There we go. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So we can customize the colors there. And then for here, however, we can customize it right here. And it changes it for us. So it changes it independently, which is kind of sort of nice. 
Um, so yeah, so completely customizable, can bring it in, pretty dope, pretty awesome. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll start up a bounty here and we'll just show you a little bit on how to cheese this stuff out so you can get your Necromech as quick as possible. Absolutely fun. You can bring your Necromech into any open world currently. They are talking about releasing it into normal mission variants. Uh, I have not yet tested it if it's going to be available inside of Railjack, if you could just bring it inside of a Railjack mission. I think that would be pretty cool too. Like, there's nothing that would freak out the uh, Grenier other than to see this giant thing that's just smashing their face in. But <laughs> it's, um, I will definitely say the Necromech is dope. And I don't know why there's a lot of people out there, they're going to say that, oh, well, it's just an over glorified Warframe. No, it's like bringing two Warframes with you. And if one Warframe is great, two is better. And you're definitely going to see why this thing, I've been having a lot of fun with the Necromech, just bringing it in and just absolutely wrecking. It is the it is it is so cool. You can go up against some of the toughest enemies inside of the open worlds, and you can just do fine. You can just sit there and chill. It's a it's pretty great actually. So here we go. I can't spawn it in this little area, this little pocket. So we're gonna go out into the open world. Um, and here we are, and we'll just go ahead and spawn it in. And the way we can do this is there's two ways to get into the Necromech. I can use Transference, and I can go into my Tenno. And then I can go Transference into my Necromech. And then I can Transference out, and then I can go Transference into my Warframe. Or I can look at the Necromech, and I can just use Transference, and bada-bing, bada-boom, we're in. So if we press A, and we hold A, we can actually float. And if we dodge while we're in the air, we get this nice, cool little animation where we do that. Um, and if you don't get stuck, then it's pretty cool. So here we go. And it's got a little charge bar at the bottom. That is your engine bar. So when you see a mod that says 20% uh, engine regen, it's actually talking about that bar down there. So it's a sprint mechanic, so you do have to deactivate your sprint in order to get it to charge. So you can now see it charging. I deactivated my sprint. Um, and I can uh, then reactivate it, and then I can just activate it there. Uh, or if you just tap the bumper, you'll just do a dodge, and it just does a small one. Um... And if we jump, you can just do a normal jump, or you can hold, and then the last for the jump, we'll get an enemy right here. We'll go, ba bam! <laughs> just flip ourselves upside down and wreck these guys. We can melee. I really wish that they would allow you to bring melee weapons into that, so I don't. I'm just not just pushing this guy with my fist. Although if you do just melee, um, you can actually send like the knocks. It's really really funny. You can send the knocks, and you can just send them across, flying across the map. And if your Kavat doesn't move, then you can't face through your Kavat, even though you're bigger than it. Um, we can just use a manual and just fully automatically use uh, our gun. But this art gun actually has an alt fire to it, which is pretty cool. We can uh, just charge this if it'll let me. Come on, charge, charge. I don't know why it's not cooling down. Oh, I have to wait till that bar is filled up. So you see there's that little blue bar at the bottom. I thought it was filled, but it wasn't. There's a blue bar that fills up with affinity for amount of kills that you get. And when that blue bar reaches all the way at peak capacity, then you can use a charge shot, which is pretty cool. So those guys are out over there gathering stuff. So I don't think they know what they're doing. <laughs> so we'll actually get going. Oh, I can't until after we... Because we're actually doing a... Oh, jeez. Come on. Come on. Get it together, bro. Let's go find some stuff. Oh, we got a guy over there. He's doing that stuff. You know what? I'll go back to my Necromech. Here, we'll just keep on going over this. Here we go. They got it. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're doing the isolation vault. So the very first part of the vault is we got to go collect some residue. Uh, you do keep the residue afterwards, so that's pretty nice, um, even though you're throwing it in and creating it. Um, and now we're actually going to defend this target. So we'll go through these abilities. The very first ability is our little canister. As you can see, I'm holding it there in my hand. And we'll find a nice guy to throw this at. Come on, where are you guys at? Oh, hey, catch. <laughs> Toss it. Oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, we got our shroud. We got our mines. All nice and lovely. And then if we get energy, we'll get uh, we'll get the uh, thing up and going. Let's see. See if we can give my necromech energy here. Um, it is bugged out. You don't pick up energy orbs in it, and I don't know if they intend on fixing that or if it's uh, just a thing. There's also another bug with it. That um, so you're usually only supposed to have the shroud open for a few seconds, but currently if you use transference, 
and you kind of just, uh, while it's active, you can actually have it up indefinitely until you deactivate it. So, um, something nice and nifty about it. If you do die while you're in the Necromech, oh, geez, it actually deactivated it because I went out. Interesting. Because it went out too many times. Let's see. Let's, um... Maybe I can uh, get some energy pads. Oh, shoot. Let's get some energy pads down and see if uh, I can't get my Necromech that. Let's see. Let's get him some energy. Come on. Energy now. Nope. <laughs> no energy. So it is not working in my favor. But let's see, I think everybody, did everybody go on the inside? It looks like they went down on the inside. So we're going to go in. See if we can't get a, I think Protea's uh, third is actually impacts the Necromech. So if you do have a Protea, I have noticed when I have played with other people, don't quote me on it because it might not necessarily be true. It might be a figment of my imagination and still might just be bugged out. But I was able to get energy from, uh, oh, there we go. We got some, oh, no, never mind. That's not what I thought it was. Okay, here we go. We're going to have to show this forth here. This is great. The other reason why I'm doing this uh, vault is so you can see the Necromech. And then after we complete this vault run, what we're going to do is I'll show you that there are two other tier bounties. We won't do both of them, but I'll always show you the other one, and we'll end up leaving the squad. That way we don't uh, bother these guys. Always leave squad, as an FYI. If you're, if you're in the open world and you decide to change subject and don't decide to go along with the party, just, just leave squad. You'll keep all your stuff. You can exit. Just leave squad. Don't take everybody with you. Nobody likes that. Just leave squad and go back on your own. We're all done with that. We don't need that stuff. Okay. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. We're wrecking these uh, Tenno Scoon. They did actually do several updates. I, I'm not going to lie. I did like the consistency with the Volt. The very first Volt that I always got um, before on day one which is absolutely incredible. They ended up getting rid of it because everybody was complaining about the Volt. But essentially, you could get a Necromech to kind of walk around with. And the reason why I liked it is because it really helped you against the Necromech. So you'd have it, you'd keep it alive. Um, it would have one-shot it like Wukong's uh, third ability would. So if you do end up having a Wukong in your squad, I do recommend bringing that because um, Wukong is just overpowered against Necromechs, which is absolutely great Warframe to bring. Activate, pop the third, let him hit you a whole bunch, max it about for ability duration, hope that he doesn't actually um, turn on you or anything like that, and then, uh, or jump, or just dodge you, and then you'll just one-shot the Necromech with uh, Wukong's third. So it makes it really, really, really great. Here, we'll get, um, we'll get some of these things going. I'll just be a manual turret while I'm in my Necromech. Get both of us going in our favor. Let's uh, knock back this guy. You know, eat fist. <laughs> Just send them flying across. It's great. They might not die, but it's uh, they'll fly across. Boom, boom. Look at that guy fly. Oh, just gorgeous. Gorgeous. He's got crazy amount of health, too. He does free and react to the uh, other enemies unless I put my shroud up. Um, so yeah, there's that, that you might have to worry about. You can do some melee. I'm basically, I'm mostly meleeing right now because I can't get energy. Um, because the energy is highly bugged. Oh, it, it, I don't know if you noticed that. So if I go all the way up here, there's actually a, you got a distance limitation. I don't know if that's a bug, but there's a distance limitation. So if you jump up, we'll go all the way up there. You jump up and you go, you do your ground pound melee. Oh, I did it that time. I don't know why I, I'm struggling to do this. Okay. So we'll jump up. But he actually stops halfway. I don't know if you saw that. Notice how I didn't get an AoE or anything? Yeah, that's because uh, it actually stops. So it doesn't go all the way to the ground. And I don't know if that's a bug that they need to fix. But it actually does stop a portion of the way down. Okay. Well, they are all the, all the way down at the bolt. And I'm just sitting here casually just minding my own business. I'm, I'm Mr. Thick here. Jeez, these guys won't get him get out of my way. I 
That was a nice, wonderful cluster. It looks like they might have already taken down the uh, other Necromech, but not to worry. I'm here now. Boom, boom, boom. So the Necromech would have spawned in. They took him out already. And it looks like they took him out. What would they have taken him out? Looks like maybe down here. But yeah, so in this very first bounty, there is one Necromech that spawns. And if your teammates um, actually take him out, then uh, he has a chance of dropping the parts. Um, I didn't get the part because I wasn't down here. I wasn't paying attention. And it looks like they're trying to figure out how to unlock the vault or if they're just gone. There's uh, keys that they got to get to. And at the end, there's a puzzle. So we'll go down here. See if I actually get it. Some bees definitely make it easy to get a whole bunch of loot. Oh, just just walked right on through that. Perfect. So I'm thinking, where would Necoloid? Usually he's down over there. I wonder if he's down on the opposite side. Because if he wasn't that way, and that, they've kind of made these um, kind of sort of ish, asymmetrical ish kind of deal. Oh, so our bounty just reset, so I won't be able to show you that um, that he actually, um, the bounty's actually reset, but you can actually find them in two different locations. I'll show you where they're at on the map for, for you guys. But they, uh, the next two bounties come from Mother inside of the Nekolisk. Okay, so let's actually pull out our, actually let's see if our teammates actually try to kill me. Oh, I got energy now. Finally. Oh, finally. Get wrecked, nerds. Die, mother foes. So, yeah, I deactivated the ability so I'd get it off early. Um, here we are. And we're going to wreck these guys. Get wrecked, nerds. Oh, jeez. This is great. I love this thing. We'll just sit right here and we'll just... Uh, We'll just... Death from above! Oh, I love that. I can actually shoot through that. That's perfect. I didn't think uh, I'd actually be able to do that. Look at that charged up. Gorgeous. Hey, I think I met your grandma. She's back over there. She's just as decayed as you are. And toxic. Pun intended. Yeah, trash talking NPCs. Yeah, yeah, they can hear me. Of course they can hear me. They're NPCs, you know? Love trash talking NPCs. My favorite thing about trash talking NPCs is because they can't talk back. So it's like they can't be equally as insulting. So you don't even have to hear their BS. You just have to uh, kill them. That's all. So it's great. So if we've done this correctly and we killed the Necrolist fast enough, there sometimes in the center here there will be a um, scintillant that will actually just be floating out in the center. And that's going to be on all the volts is where it's going to be just floating out in the center. And you just kind of dash across and you can actually collect it. Uh, it's We didn't get it here, and I'm not entirely sure why we didn't get it. Um, I know you have to activate some um, crystals, reactive crystals out and about and around. Uh, they kind of look like, the reactive crystals look like this, but they'll be plastered on walls and stuff. And if you activate those... It will unlock additional doors and additional vaults, and if you do unlock them, then you can um, get additional resources. So there's like there's secret vaults even with inside the vault. So definitely keep an eye out on those um, challenges because uh, they're very good. I, we get this one a whole lot. This one doesn't have a secret door that you open per se, but at least you um, you'll be able to. Uh, get the Scylent, because the Scylent also comes around. I, I think it's kind of a bonus score that they actually put in, so there might be that attached to it as well. Um, again, not entirely sure what makes it consistent. It hasn't been very consistent for me, so I don't want to say with confidence, oh, this is definitely how you get it. Uh, but I just do know that you can get it from here, and it will be floating as an orb, and you just kind of jump across. 
and you get it. So it looks like my teammates either got it themselves or they weren't kind enough to uh, uh, share and point it out to anybody so everybody else could get it. It might be bugged where the very first person that finds it gets it, so that might be a thing as well. Um, so in which case then I wouldn't be able to see it, but just so that you're aware, um, you can get that sent to Lund. So here we go. Oh, we got actually more energy. Oh, it looks like they're already down there get, getting the puzzle, so let's go down there and join them. Here we go. So here's the puzzle. If they activate it correctly, there's going to be some symbols that pop up on the door. You basically punch in the doors in the correct order, and then you can activate them. So they're activating the order. So as you can see, we got the very first symbol, FOSS, RIS, and they're going to shoot them with the, the Tenno abilities here in a second for the other two. So we've got Vom, and the last one is Zada. There we go. And now we enter the Volt. And down here inside the Volt, there is crazy amount of loot. There we go. I'm just going to collect these. Go back in the Void Rig, because the Void Rig is awesome. And did I grind out my Void Rig? Yes, I did. I did not buy it. Buying was not available, so this is how I got it, and that's how I know you guys can get it too. So go in, kill the Necromech, get the part to drop, and then complete, a, complete the mission. Okay, so the way we get out of here, there's actually a fast way to get out of here, and I'm going to use it. We're going to leave Voidrick behind. I'm sorry, Voidrick. Bye, guy. You're great to me. I love you. I miss you so much already, and I've been gone for a matter of a few seconds. We're going to come to this little guy. Wait till he prompts us. Oh, somebody got it to him, to me first. Okay. Come on. My turn. My turn, esophagus. My turn. Say me. Pick me. Ooh, he's eating me. Now, sometimes it'll glitch you so that you're out below the map and below the planes. So, yeah, it looks like um, oh, they're, they're going to get glitched out so hard. They're trying to do the third bolt again. So I'm going to go ahead and leave squad uh, because it's going to basically spam and say that they've already done it. And I, I'm not doing that. Um, so when we're actually getting the fourth uh, bolt. So you can see there's Mother right here on the map. Um, if you find Mother in the abscess down over here you can see there's a little tunnel right there mother will be located right about um oh geez let me get out of the way okay here we go mother will be located right about right there um and if you go to mother there she can prompt um, the next bounty up and it will be the fourth tier. Now that fourth bolt actually has two necromechs, so it increases your, it doubles the chances that you'll have of getting a necromech part, as well as getting standing for necroid. And then the last one is always going to be over here in the Albrex prospect. Sometimes it's up above, sometimes she's below down over here. And that will be the fifth tier, and that one will spawn in three. The enemies do get harder as you progress in the higher tier bolts, as it should, and then the enemies will also uh, hit harder, they'll deal more damage, um, etc. So just those are the next two spots. Basically it goes through the same, it's the same flow. You'll have to go get residue, you'll go in, you'll mix it, you'll throw it at the at the booty hole, and then um, the booty hole will open, then you go into the booty hole, you kill enemies to reduce the toxicity, go in, kill the necromex, open up the vault, get the loot, get out. And it's the same thing for all three of them, it's just that the thing that changes is the number of necromechs, which equals the number of necromech parts and pods that you can actually get, increases as well. Um, so don't make the mistake that I made inside of this video and just not follow everybody because if you don't stick with everybody, when those necromech parts and those uh, Orkin uh, orientation matrix and the animus matrix, when those all drop, you won't get them. So you have to stick with your group. Make sure you're communicating with your group where everybody's at. Stick with your team. If somebody's not with you, try to make sure that somebody's there and catch up with them, okay? So look out for each other and stay safe out there, okay, Tenno? And that is everything that you need to know about the Necromex. Let's try this one more time. Oh, my goodness. So good. It's so good. Die! Oh, so great. Such a great ability. Such a great thing. Oh, love it. Probably way more. Oh, one more thing. I should probably should mention this. <laughs> um, 
do not extract with it. Do not extract with it. Do not extract with it. If you do extract with it, you will get hardcore glitched out like there's nobody's business. And we'll go ahead and we'll do it right now since since I'm doing it. Here we go. We're going to attempt to extract. It will, uh, if, unless they haven't changed it, we'll see if they let they changed it here. Um, here we go. We're going to go in. It will sometimes let you in, and if it does, it will not say that you're actually at extraction even though you've been at extraction this entire time. Here, take that. Which is a, is a bug. I feel like they desperately need a need to fix. We'll see if it lets us through the double doors here. Okay, so yeah, they did fix it. Thank goodness they fixed it, because you would be able to enter here. Oh, oh, maybe it is bugged. Yep, it's still bugged. So don't try to enter in there. Um, you're going to see my Necromech is actually going to spawn here in a hot second. And is it? Is it? Maybe? Okay, definitely don't do it with the squad. Don't try it, because it bugged out on me earlier, and it would it spawned my Necromech like right there. And nobody could extract, and it like we were just in here. We couldn't leave. We couldn't extract. So it's severely bugged. Don't try it. Do not try. It. <laughs> their their game broke. Got a message from them. Their game broke. Yeah, their game broke because I just tried to leave. So yeah. The, the, so that's confirmation. Do, do not try doing that tier three bounty because as soon as that day rotation changes, because it bugs out, it starts spamming and it starts throwing you through all the prompts. So don't do it. So stay out there and continue breaking Warframe, guys.